What's up, everybody? This is Eric Reed Harry, and today my guest is Alosha from bioveda.co, and we'll have a link in the description box below for Alosha's website. So, Alosha. Awesome, Harry. It's good to be part uh, of this uh, connection with you. It's uh, a long term friendship. So, thank you for being there. I always enjoy our talks together. So I've started a new series where I'm discussing different building methods with people. And I know you, like myself, uh, are standing on the shoulders of a lot of great people that came before us. And we are continuing that tradition of innovating and making things easier for people, less expensive, really just develop systems that people can use to build their own structures. And so what I'm doing right now with these series are showing different building methods. And you, my man, have two that you've recently done. You've done one that you built in Siberia, and you have your own home that you're constructing right now. And your methods that you're using are very different than what any than anything that I've seen before. And I love the simplicity. I love that the cost is extremely low to build these structures and and they're just beautiful. And that's another big thing is these structures are actually beautiful to look at and to live in. So I just wanted thoughts on for you to tell the audience here about these structures that you're working on, that you've been developing. And this way people can just have other options because like I'm working with a lot with cement I know people that are working just with earth. Other people are working with lath and different stucco mixes, Roman concrete mixes. And so depending on your environment, where you are, what you know, what you can afford to build, I want people to have a wide option to choose from, to decide, or even to smash them up and use a combination of all these different building techniques. So I want to hear more from you and your building projects that you have going on. Awesome. So let me share my screen. So the method I used last year, very interesting. I've been in Siberia, so it's in a really cold climate. Basically, we took timber struts, we bend them ourselves, very simple. And we're going to be sending you a link right now, bybeta.co forward slash bending arches. And you'll actually, in that lesson, free lesson, you'll learn how we bend these arches. Then we dropped the logs in, we got the logs from the forest. I know in America, the wood is cheap. I mean, expensive. We used C-grade wood. C-grade wood means it still comes with some bark for the struts and we had to scrape the bark off but you'll have to join quite a bit but that's the end product you've got three timber struts at the front for the bottom some of them work on compression meaning pushing some of them work on tension meaning meaning trying to pull away and then we'll we covered it with i've got all the details i've actually put this into an online course this method uh, that method i'm going to be showing you just now but rudimentary waterproofing, uh, even glazing, this whole structure cost me a thousand dollars on materials. Now I know in America things are more expensive, and you could easily times it by five. But still, like the back wood, it's all offcuts. I got those for free, so you can scrounge around and find things for very very cheap metal or did a little bit of a flushing uh, that held the turfs and then we basically did the clay lock the clay lock is a very important part it's um if we just loaded that with turf without doing a clay lock what would have happened is the waterproofing would have been torn you, you know this black waterproofing stuff it's very it's like brittle yeah especially when it's cold so the clay lock allowed which is basically straw and clay, grass and clay. It allowed uh, it to to connect. If you look in my hands, connected all together, and we, we massaged it a bit over this whole structure. And then we put the turfs. Let's let's get to the turfs. Yeah. So we put the turfs like in a Mayan pyramid. You'd think that the turfs should be going, you know, following the curvature, but, but you no. Have it stepped. It's stepped exactly, and that way, it and underneath the steps, you build up a little bit of a normal soil, 
you 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 know you tamper it slightly uh, and then you you build it up so it's all you know got got those level and then as strange as it sounds <laughs> we installed wind glass triple pane glass without any frames it's an it's 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 very rare because usually you install them in frames they're very you know brutal but it worked and but why these, it worked these windows are just designed to be in place they're not designed to open and close is that correct no exactly so we had one little window that could open you know all closed so if you get your windows correct you have the cross draft uh, ventilation basically we we put them onto the little spongy thing and recently what i've heard is you could even use scuba diving jacket that rubber neoprene stuff. yeah yeah like neoprene. a five millimeter or i don't know in, in inches like this thin, and yeah. you layer it down into so the, the easiest way is you use a router a, a router is it is it yeah a, a, yeah i think the a router and then you cut a trench out the width of your uh glass maybe like a few millimeters wider you lay down this cloth what's it called neoprene neoprene yeah and then you, you put in your glass uh, against the the wooden struts upright and then you've got little planks that are slightly wider that then you know they hold that glass from popping forward um it worked out and then you obviously use a bit of foam to you know cover the gaps and the method was pretty simple i mean you could run internet cables in it uh on top you know um yeah uh it took us i worked with two pensioners <laughs> uh and it took us a month of working uh, four hours a day to build the whole structure from scratch so it's a very very doable method Kole help me yeah so that, that's one of the methods that i'd love to share with you so uh, and the door uh, you mentioned the wood here is very expensive and it is true it's gone down a little bit but it's still extremely expensive the good thing is a lot of people buying vacant lots uh, with no homes mm -hmm. on them may have trees already that are uh, something that they can utilize and not spend any money at all on wood if they can source the wood from their own properties to be able to build something like this it would be yeah. absolutely fabulous exactly the wood mills the second hand sawmills don't actually cost a lot i was surprised i was able to get a sawmill brand new here for five thousand dollars i mean sure it'll take some work to get the wood in on there and split it up but if you are planning to build like you know five six structures i think it could really uh, make it uh worth your while i think Especially one of those portable ones also right with the chainsaw that gets on a sled and you can just slide the chainsaw up and down the log to make your different planks it would be a, another option if, if you didn't have the funds for a mill you can get one of these smaller chainsaw planks that they have and you just bolt the plank onto the lumber and you run your chainsaw along it and you can make yourself wood that way as well to also make it as inexpensive as possible. Yeah, exactly. So the pro is that the earth is positive for temperature underneath. Yeah, so plus four Celsius, plus five, some places plus nine degrees. So if you have a super cold outside, uh, by just digging yourself three feet in, okay, provided your water table is low, okay and very important in spring that you know that you know the water table obviously comes up due to snow melt if you talk about cold climate but if you like most parts in america not most parts but uh, you know where the water table is low you can safely dig in yourself a little bit just three feet which allows you to obviously save up on glazing and you get this cool you get the stable temperature of the earth what this is what we've done here so people overwintered in this home it was minus 50 for a week minus 50 celsius and they were fine they overwintered uh, you know because the earth is warming up so it's much easier to warm up a home from plus nine or plus four <laughs> you know of the temperature of the earth 
then trying to warm it up from you know minus 50 celsius i think it's minus 30 or 5 fahrenheit minus 40 fahrenheit so but then you know you gotta obviously check it with your partner and um, when i came back uh, over here i tried to do the similar structure okay let me just quickly jump here i decided to place it because in our climate here in St. Petersburg, I couldn't dig down. We have a water table problem. So I've built up with hyper adobe. Yeah. And basically it's a method I absolutely love. Can't claim it as mine. Learned from Najer Khalili. But it's a fantastic method. Najer Khalili teaches super adobe, which is basically polypropylene wide bag with barbed wire. Now, Bob, why it's all great uh, if you're in seismic activity and uh, lots of earthquakes, the ground is moving, and that's definitely a method one should consider. However, if you're in an area where you don't have earthquakes, even by doing a curvilinear wall, the reason I did that is because that previous structure I showed you, if you look at my hands, a shallow vault has a tremendous sideways pressure. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. The reason that it worked there is because we went into the earth and undisturbed clay or earth is a very good buttress. Are you guys with me? Okay. Now, if you're going above ground, you have to make sure that you buttress. And that's why on ancient structures, you see sometimes, not in some time, but most of the time, when you have walls and domes, there's some things that are going out at like 45 degree, like, you know, supporting structures that Can are you go going back out. to the image you have of the the structure being built and we can see the logs and the buttressing you're referring to? Yeah, so there, there is our earth. The earth is, uh, there it is. It's the best buttress. It's supporting, the logs can't push further than there are. Uh, um, so the logs, the logs are being stopped by the earth behind it. And so... Yeah. The, basically, the earth behind the logs is your buttress. And so yeah, those it's poles, preventing those the poles, forces from spreading out anymore. Exactly. And the poles allow uh, stop those um, logs from falling inwards. It's a very rudimentary military. This is a military engineer who developed this. So if, if they have to get out and quickly build a shelter that's bearable, that's unseen by you know, others, you know, the, these, these are the kinds of techniques. And he developed the arch because he thought, well, why? Usually they drop some logs on the roof and get on with it, you know. But this is a far uh, more elegant method because the arch is so far, far stronger, so much stronger. And another beautiful thing is that in an earthquake, the wood has a slight movement, yeah? So it's... um it has a slight elasticity. It's very different to, for example, having a ferrous cement. You know, that's why a lot of the ferrous cement constructions are failing because they, you know, <clears throat> there's no flex they don't have that. Right? Exactly. And this has some, and we noticed that when we started to load the structure, you know, if only from one side, it started to bulge from another side. We're like, oh, no, no, no. We, we have to load it equally all around. I think another important yeah. thing to point out is location, where to build. So it seems this structure here is built on a hillside because you can see the soil is taller in the back opposed to in the front. I think this structure lends itself perfectly for any sloped areas or hillsides. It seems like the perfect structure to build. Like so many people who are in love with movies, especially Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit homes, this would be the closest to a Hobbit home that I've seen yet that you could easily build really inexpensively and just really get the benefits of the geothermal energy from digging down. And in this case, building on a sloped ground or a hillside. Yeah, exactly. And th this is the shot from the lesson that I'll be sharing with uh, your subscribers of um, it's, it's coming up um, <clears throat> of how we actually bend these arches. It was also very rudimentary. We just hammered the little nuggets, a uh, little piece of wood timber into the grass <laughs> and following the obviously the radii. Yeah. 
and uh, and then we we had we had those things then and by the way you could use a lot less timber all you have to do is search gothic arches in america that your own fellow men already making and they're using far less timber they'll use two planks of timber with little nuggets in between and they use a bit of glue and and a bolt connection we went rudimentary we used nails <laughs> no glue that's it so yeah, there was i know really also no glue. i know also another method that's used a lot to make these arches is steaming the wood where you'll have long planks of wood that you'll steam to soften it making it easier to bend then you keep it in that shape until it it dries and it'll pretty much hold that shape so you'd have options with the types of wood you use and the methods you use to bend. So if you did make mm -hmm. yourself a steam box, you could soften that wood up to make it a little more pliable to bend to avoid cracking. Because depending on the thickness of the wood, if it's too thick and you try to bend an arch, you could get a crack. But that same wood that's been steamed is more pliable. Then you could bend it without cracking the wood. And then you really get all that strength. So there, there's a definitely... Uh, different methods of getting the same results yeah it, it just on your uh, we also would try to wait and we even tried to wet the wood but it was such a mess not on this building site on my own building site so let, let me let me head over to my building site that i'm busy with right now and uh, i tried to bend the wood because i i presented this to my wife and she said alosha this is too low I don't want to live in such a low thing. I want height. I'm like, how much height do you want? It's uh, nine feet at the tallest point, you know? She says, no, I want height. So <clears throat> I tried to bend the wood more, and it didn't work. So the next best thing was to actually place the two arches, the same arches, okay but place them in a way of a gothic arch together and in in this method this is what i'm doing right now i got my height to 18 feet high because here, here they're going up on the, on those walls on those curvy walls that i've shown you again most of the construction i was doing alone or with one other person so what i like about these methods is then they are Sure, the walls were got built with uh, two other guys in, in three days. In three days, we had all the walls built. So we got Hyper Adobe down to freaking uh, like perfection. And was, then a crane came. And uh, I mean, if you have manpower, you could do this with men with like a long stick. And, you know, they're not that heavy. I was carrying half of that arch by myself. I built all these arches by myself, by the way. Um, uh, but when they're all together, then I had to ask a crane guy. But basically, yeah, then we had insulation. And there is a great method that I would, I'm going to be discovering with straw bale, but I'll, I'll chat about it uh, later. Then I had, yeah, this is now almost done. Not almost done, but uh, the glazing I got done for $500, all secondhand from torn down buildings. So scratch around, guys. Look at that glazing. The, the, you know, brand new, that stuff is very expensive. Another thing to consider is I would place these bolts, maybe, or what are they called, the timber struts, straight away because it was a bit more difficult to, 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 to climb up and get them done once the arch is already up. So this is for the second floor, just for the part of the building. Loft area where you could have a bed or whatever you want. Yeah, storage. exactly, exactly. So, eighteen feet foot high. Um, then I'm hyper adobe. I love hyper adobe. I'm, there is I'm sculpting a bath. I'm sculpting a toilet area. I'm sculpting an oven now. I'm developing that oven can go channel through. It's lagging a bit, but I'm here it will come up now i'm developing the oven can push heated air through the wall so my wall becomes a mass accumulator of heat 
It's just a phenomenal material. In fact, it was Harry, with your permission, I have a quick a three minute video about this material. Yeah, uh, we'd love to see it. Let's play it. Yeah. And, and I love how you're going to heat the walls up and you have your walls radiate that heat back at you. That's uh, that's something I've always said should be done with Adobe structures and, and even Cobb structures. I was always of the thought of running PEX tubing through the wall for the exact same purpose, to absorb that heat and then have your walls radiate the heat back at you. I had the material stitched for me from scratch. As you can see, I went to the factory that I had it made. Tremendous. You could do so much. It's, it's, I, I call it a 3D printer, a, a handmade uh, 3D printer, very low tech. It, it's fire resistant. Okay. It's completely, in fact, <laughs> if you do catch a fire, the building actually becomes stronger because the clay is cures. You can use yeah. absolutely any material from, a, a, except like um, something with high organic matter like leaves, but anything else. I've used clay before. I've used sand. I've used soil. Like you obviously don't want to use topsoil because that's gold. It's a very nice, it's a much faster alternative to tires. <clears throat> It's very pliable. It's, it's basically like plastiline, but uh, you can sculpt it in just by keeping the geometry. You've got to know how geometry works. And then uh, it's very pliable. You could do anything you want, put air pipes in it. And obviously I learned this method in America at Cal Earth, but their stack was using those, uh, you know, polypropylene bags. And Nadir Khalili is the master behind it. So by no means I'm claiming any of this. I've just... I've used now eight and a half thousand meters, which is about 25,000 feet of this material of super Adobe and hyper Adobe in my projects, so like terraces, spirals, a bath I sculpted, uh, even an oven that boiled water for five showers, which, you know, it might skip that video. I built a wall that held a freaking river in flood. I build water wetlands and stuff. And I, I'm in love with this material. And in fact, any ecological, biological, you know, technologies that... So what I'm developing is actually a living bioshelter organism. I can't even call it a home. It's a, it's a temple. It's a temple where which will house our bodies without climbing into a 25 year dead hole. I think um, having lost that beautiful orange dome that you see on a lot of my pictures there, having lost that dome and everything in South Africa to the bank, I'm a strong believer that um, we have to, we have to build without debt. If that means you have, to, you can only afford a small home, then, then so be it. But um, my main motor is debt free. That's why I scrounge on dumps <laughs> for my recycling sites for those windows. My door is second hand. If I could, like, uh, people in our group, uh, Jeff, uh, he just brought some pallets that he's stripping. Sure, it's, it's very enticing. You almost feel jealous when you see like some house just pop up in three weeks and it's there you know but then you must know that those people have climbed themselves into 25 year debt to have that home go up in such a short time so sure it's been i guess what i'm trying to share money runs out you slow down on your construction do some things make some cash come back do something and it might stretch just three months, like my, my this little arch, the orange arch I'm showing you now, that'll stretch to three months. But 
I want climbing to debt to, to build it. And that's, I think, what the main thing that I want to share with your subscribers. Uh, Stay well, away from debt. How much do you think you've put into your current structure that you're building now? It costs me three times more. I'm not going to lie that in Siberia, I guess in America, it will cost you about nine grand to have it glazed with second hand. It costs me three grand. Sometimes I can buy three for you. Three grand for all the timber, the large metal roofs, and the glazing, the secondhand glazing and doors. Now you have a home that's 18 feet high with a double story. Something else to consider is you have a, a certain square footage that you need to stay below if you are not to apply your home to various building authorities. That's another great method because if you make your home 200 square foot al allowed, you could have a second floor made out of dream catcher. And I've done that before, I've woven a dream catcher out of rope this thick, and you have a whole second story, another 200 square foot, <laughs> but you, it's not. It's not counted because it's not a solid floor. It's a, yeah, it's a net, net. but yeah. frick, man, you can put, you can put mats there. You can put uh, whatever you can increase because you've got that height. You can have little beds that are up on pulleys that, that you know, so you can really get a lot of height while staying uh, below uh, uh, the building code radar. And, and that, that structure in Siberia, if you keep it flat without anything extending out of it, you know, like any greenhouses, you could be totally hidden. So it's a stealth structure. I, I looked at it from satellite, could not see it, Harry, <laughs> because it's grass all around, it's grass on top. It's like, where's this thing? And that's how they spot these structures. They have... Artificial intelligence, basically, there was something there or uh, there wasn't anything there. And now there was something there. So basically, you make a you pull a big tarp like a military tarp over the whole thing. You, you build it, you take the tarp down. It's like nobody knew what happened. And if you have that space where you don't have, you know, like neighbors, you're on the end of the road. You could pull a lot of interesting things without being noticed at all. Yeah, I can I definitely see that. And um, that's one of the beauties of it is because so many people here in this country want to be off grid. They don't want to be followed anymore. And so that's a nice little caveat to throw on top is you're under the radar and hard to spot building these type of structures in the ground like that and using the earth. I mean, the, the other thing is even structures usually adobe and cob homes that are built will have a living roof on top and those living roofs also help tremendously to keep the temperature down and keep the temperature more equal in the in your structure so whether you're building it into the ground like you did in your siberia structure or in your saint Petersburg structure that's above the ground you could if you wanted to put a living roof on there as well but I saw you already have insulation and metal paneling, but those are options that people have. You don't have to be in the ground to still have a living roof on top that'll have tremendous benefits when it comes to keeping your house cool and warm. Yeah, exactly. And whilst we're talking about the arches, this is the next method I want to try. Okay. This is a straw bale filler because as you've seen uh, on my video there i used poly extruded poly it's not polystyrene it's the insulation stuff you know yeah. hard foam okay which is toxic if it's burning obviously um it, it's it, it's expensive this is a this is beautiful basically what these guys got here arches i think they're made of plywood thick plywood on the on the actual rooms yeah? yeah and then they have a plank of wood going on the outside and a plank of wood on going on the inside and the thickness of the arch is designed to fill in a straw bale in between you know in between those arch those uh let me get back here the yeah. beams the ribs 
Exactly, exactly. Uh, I think I think it's worthwhile investigating this method. Again, I think what we're trying to show is don't be rigid of, I like this method. Look what's in your area. Maybe the farmers there can get you that these straw bales like really, really cheap because maybe like they're just getting rid of them. I don't know. It's like if you're close to town, you can have access to polystyrene. Research, check Harry's video on how to make polystyrene aircrete, you know. If you can get the pallets, uh, there is no reason that you need to climb into debt. Think, don't be anal that you have to use this material or that material. Yeah, as another example, you might be, you might live close to a sawmill that has tons of sawdust and sawdust could be mixed into cement. You could mix the sawdust with aircrete and you could fill those wall cavities so you have some more mass in there. There's a lot of options. And that's what's important about the series I'm doing is because you'll see a wide variety of st structures, depending on what's available to you in your area, you'll be able to better come up with a plan that'll save you money, you know, save you time on the build. As another example, I was just talking to someone about magnesium cement and how mm -hmm. much we uh, like the idea of using magnesium cement. I'm not talking about magnesium oxide. I'm talking about a cement that's already mixed. So it's much stronger because mm -hmm. a lot of people aren't aware magnesium oxide is water soluble. So if it, water, if rain got on it or any water, it would wash it away eventually. So magnesium oxide needs to be mixed with other additives to make it so it doesn't wash away in the, in the water and it could even set underwater. And, but the issue with the magnesium oxide that I was uh, explaining is the shipping that I have to pay to get the magnesium oxide. The, the magnesium I want to order comes from Las Vegas and it's like a thousand dollars just to have that shipped here. And then oh. how that's each pallet. So oh. how many pallets am I gonna? So would that make sense for people if you have a small budget? To me, that wouldn't make sense. So you want to look at another avenue, another route. So this is why it's good to have options and you're not, you know, set in stone in your ideas. You are more fluid and flexible with the options that you have available to you just to make the best decision for your build. Like the Hyper Adobe, in my opinion, you can't go wrong with that. You have a solid wall. Most likely, if you're out in the West like I am, you're going to have a clay in your soil. And just like Alosha said just now, as long as it's not the top soil that's considered gold for growing, you can use sand. You could even use rocks. I've seen usually a lot of times gravels used for the lower level. But there's a wide variety of materials. And the other benefit of the hyper adobe opposed to adobe is not needing the bob wire because the layers mesh, the material goes through and they'll bond with one another rather than having this probably propylene material that's very slick and you needing to mm -hmm. use bob wire there. So that's another yeah. thing. Do you want to work with bob wire? If you don't want to, then you would want to go with the option of hyper adobe instead of adobe so you have options yeah exactly just like harry says it's area specific like if you have clay clay is a really phenomenal material for cob but i put it into bags because bags is a really good form work for for any material so you'll see me use bags for clay you'll see me use bags for sandy soil I've got a variety of uh, designs. Like I keep on pushing the limits. Uh, th in fact, this design, this one is my latest one. It's designed to shed the snow off really fast off the, you know, the greenhouse. It's very much inspired by earthships. A lot of research has gone into it. You know, Cal Earth has put their, their, played their parts. So ferro cement, I've gone, gone on a ferro cement workshop. Uh, where it uses a lath, a rebar, and that's my teacher. That's my other teacher, John Todd. So I'm trying to merge not just construction, 
but I'm actually trying to merge biology with it, it with my ecosystems and in getting inspiration from people like Philip Block, big inspiration. There is a fabric structure that actually build a fabric net. <laughs> it's phenomenal. And then, and I sprayed it, Harry, this um, you know, do some research into this method. Phenomenal. Then we went to Brazil, we we, we had a whole spiral made. Uh, you can make underground water tanks. So don't, uh, just like Harry says, don't limit, just try. But I'm not trying is, you know, expensive. So Harry's got training. I have training where we share our mistakes with you and the do's and the don'ts. But basically, I want to create a home that has a really lush jungle in the cold climate, very much inspired by earthships, but earthships are in an area where there is a lot of sun. We don't have that, that uh, you know, may, maybe some parts of America also very overcast. But so use like like tires, you know, tires are great for foundations. I think it's a, a must to use tires because they are otherwise accumulating. You know, sure, people say, no, but they're recycling tires. They are now not being recycled fast enough. They're dumping them. And we just had a fire two weeks ago, not we, but in Kuwait, where 55 million tires went on fire. 55 million tires all burned, all burned. So this is a catastrophe for on a world scale. And the least we can do is use two courses of tires for our foundation. And if everybody does that, or, you know, at least a, lot, a large part of, so the natural builders have to push it, a fantastic foundation. And I give Mike Reynolds my hat, take my hat off that. But for me, it started off, these biological forms started off in my, in my fabric career. I used to decorate events. Just interject. So, could, could you go back to that image you, with the tires? A lot of people don't know this, and this is really important because when you're moving on to a new property, you will have to make a driveway leading up to your house. I have a property where county will not allow me to take a building permit until I have a driveway permit and a septic tank permit. So I need a driveway permit for the purpose of uh, emergency vehicles knowing where the driveway is to, to get to your property. And then the septic tank permit you need before they'll give me a building permit. So on the road, the image on the left with the cement truck, that's a system called mechanical concrete. Mechanical concrete is where you put the tires together, like you see there. It doesn't have to be two rows. It could be just one row of tires mm -hmm. you put together, and then you fill those tires with soil and rock. And what happens is you will never have to redo that road again. So if you're building a driveway or maybe, you know, like my property, I have over a thousand feet of driveway before you get to the house. If I'd done my driveway like that, and I didn't know about this back then, but had I known, I would have done my driveway with the tires, making a mechanical concrete road that will never need maintenance again. And you're talking about heavy vehicles like semi trucks and cement trucks, extremely heavy vehicles will go over this all day long and not cause any damage opposed to a road without tires that you'll get potholes and you get water buildup. I just wanted to point that out to people. Look up mechanical concrete because it's a real uh, game changer when it comes to your road and when it comes to being able to recycle tires that's a perfect way to do it yeah exactly so yeah just just to, also to mention that these forums the natural forums are very very strong this is a valley okay like a valley part of uh, this weird structure they have three thousand kilograms of sand pushing at one point of in the valley part, not even the dome part of the structure. The methods uh, are widely known in America. Gustavino was building this a hundred years ago with thin tiles. 
but still, this is a very labor intensive, requires master, uh, master craftsmen, bricklayers to do this kind of thing. And that's why I propose something uh, alternative that possibly in our academy in future, you know, obviously it's all self-finance, but uh, so things take a little while. But in future, we're seeing using augmented reality, not to obviously make benches, <laughs> because we can do, do that with Hyper Adobe, but to put vaults up, put, put structures up that would usually require a master bricklayer. Now, anyone can do it with a fast setting that's really fast setting minutes and um, it goes up. So I guess the picture I'd like to leave you with is how I see property development of the future. And I'm not going to call it eco-villages because <clears throat> I believe eco-villages come with a lot of dogmas and hierarchy. But this is a drawing we've done with Paul Richardson, uh, another bio-architect. Um, yeah, so what what we have here is plots of about an acre each. And they're basically all the roads are designed on contour, which is very important because when you design roads on contour, they don't wash away. This is, I could call it like an arco it, It's just a vision, but I would, lo I would love basically where I'm heading, guys. I'm inviting you to come to our live workshop. It's happening very soon in just over a month, but we're inviting you to a country where it has no building regulations. You don't have septic permit you don't have any of that you can build up to 60 feet high and move in at any stage of construction we're going to have an immigration attorney so if you want to relocate and check out our, our country or at least check it out because it's nothing what you've heard in, in uh, you know a lot of fear has been spread about our country and it's nothing like that very safe very 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 safe and everything works like clockwork so we have training coming up on the 16th of august we already have uh, Six Americans and Europeans coming. I'm making it an international training. And also we have a drawing course where we're going to teach you how to draw these things first on. Uh, and that's happening in September. Online training. This is a live training on 16th of August. And the online training is our drawing course where you're going to learn how to draw on paper and in 3D program. Harry has gone through the training. Yeah, Harry, maybe you can comment on your experience. Yeah, it's it was a really great training course because Alosha first taught you how to design on paper using pencil and paper. And I found that to be really cool because like so many, I always wanted to draw a type of sketch like that of a home. So the fact that he'll, he'll go through that and you'll learn that. But for me, my favorite part was taking those paper drawings that everyone did and turning in them into CAD drawings so now you go to your computer do the same designs now you can flip the image around 360 you know all the way around really cool really great workshop the other great thing about alosha and all of his workshops is that he's always there to support you on telegram they have meetings on sundays every other sunday there's meetings and if you have questions or you're having trouble you're stuck you just reach out We'll get right back to you and, and assist you with that. Another thing what Alosha will do for you is if you don't want to do your own drawing design, you could contact Alosha and all those beautiful designs you just saw that he draws, you can contact him, talk to him, and you guys together can come up with a design for your own home that he could do for you. And then with his training course, you could go ahead and take that design and go right to building it. And as he mentioned on bioveda.co, he's got a, a free course where you, you have the beginning of the course and you'll learn for free right now how to build the arch structure you saw for the Siberia. A great value for your money. I don't know any workshops that put in the time and effort that Alosha has done we're making sure the work is understandable, it's clear. And again, the major thing is having that assistance by him. If you're stuck somewhere, 
you, you can't beat that. You, the hands-on help you get is, is really is worth more than your pain. So it's really a great deal. Thanks, thanks, Harry. And I come because having spent twenty-five years in South Africa in a very hot climate. Uh, I know what it's like, like living in desert-like conditions, and now staying in St. Petersburg, where and Siberia, where the temperature reaches minus forty. So I've got a very good perspective of what we need to do for cooling and for heating of our homes. So there is no one home that can fit all. It really is climate dependent, depending on the angle of your sun. Like in our country, like here in St. Petersburg. There is no sun for three months of the year. So building an airship that's designed for towels simply will not work. The sun rises at uh, 10 a.m., 11, <laughs> and it sets at 4, and it's overcast for four months. You know, overcast. So it's a completely different condition, and that's why we have to design homes based on our geographic locations and, and, and our climatic conditions the, uh, and all of that. So another thing so I want to do, yeah. another thing I want to do is I'm going to provide a link in the description box below, not only for Alosha's website and contact information. As Alosha says, he has people from America and Europe going to his workshop. And for Americans, there is a YouTube video I'm going to put in, in the description box of an American who moved to Russia. And a lot of the things you might be worried about, you don't have to worry about. Not even speaking the language that you have to worry about because there's so much English speaking, in a, especially in a lot of the larger cities. So it, it's not like you have to be worried or concerned. You'll be able to go through. So the video is great. It, I forget the name of the channel, but it'll be in the description box below. American, he, he moved to Russia. And he just speaks about his experience and, and debunks a lot of myth that people have about the country. And it's really just a beautiful country to visit. And you couldn't be hanging with a better person, Alosha, if you go for the workshop. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. So I've sent the links in the description, in the chat. And I welcome you guys to take take check out the free class on bending arches also drawing the foundation so you can see how i draw actually complex foundations on the ground because it's not that complex and i teach it step by step so you can actually check those two lessons to experience our online training and the two courses are the drawing course and uh, the building course these are the new ones i do have the abundance of water and the dome courses, but the camera where but shake and the old courses, the information is there, but it's not, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm proud of them, you know, uh, but the two new courses, I'm really, really uh, pleased. And I'm gladly say that uh, you'll get your value for them. And they both come with weekly and bi-weekly support. So if you're stuck on anything, you just, you just get to the session and you ask a question. And we'll help you get through the Watellarium course. I'm providing bi weekly support for the next 18 months because it, that's how long it's going to take me to develop that masterpiece that I was sharing with you, which is a self heating home without firewood for cold climate. And that's the promise I've made for the Watellarium course. But in it is three other sessions, three other training methods. The one which I was sharing with you in Brazil which is, you know, hyper adobe method, timber method in Siberia, and the timber method that I've just done for my own home. So there's going to be four methods, four methods that are going to be presented in this uh, uh, Watsilarium course. So 25% is already uploaded, and the other two methods are going to be uploaded this autumn. They're already recorded. They just need to be up edited and, up and uploaded this autumn. Okay, so yeah, so that's the Brazil. That's another method that will be in this training. So uh, it's my master, it's my masterpiece training, actually. One last design. Sure. Guys, this is where I'm heading. Just so you know, I've shown you a bit of the, the history. I've shown you a bit of the past. I'm heading towards, look at these printed pieces. 
they are printed off site and they work on compression. There is no rebar and there is no glue between the pieces. They're placed on a form work. The form work gets removed and you have this beautiful structure that's super strong, that's bearable. And based on this design, on this method that you're seeing that developed by Philip Block, I am, this is a quick sketch. This is where I'm heading towards. I'm going to be made of little pieces like that that are going to be placed together. It's, got, it's a quick sketch, so it's nothing to be proud of. I'm obviously going to be developing it way further. But it's got the first layer of glazing. It's got, let's say, the quarter domes like you've seen on my other, um, you know, quarter geodesic dome transparent. And it's got an ETFE type of covering on the third layer. So this is for Canada. Double greenhouse, what an airship calls a Canadian airship. So it's got a first layer of greenhouse, second layer of greenhouse, the geodesic dome, and a third glazing is this double or triple pane glass. So this is where, how I see homes of the future. Um, and this is all covered, yeah, and this will be buried, buried behind, just like an airship up until this line. So that's that's just wanted to share with you. Obviously, next time we'll catch up with Harry Mom in a year's time, I will have this drawing really nicely polished up. And uh, yeah, but that's where I'm going with by architecture. So your support will assist me to uh, take that research further. Hey, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Alosha, for sharing all this great info. With that, we'll say goodbye. Thank you all for watching. Peace out. We love you all, and I'll catch you later. Boom.